What's going on everybody, I'm YouTube's ProPJ and welcome to 8mm. This game I actually found online somewhere, I don't remember where. I have a little book where I write down all the ideas for stuff that I want to play, and this was one of them. But then, as soon as I wrote it down, other stuff like Spider-Man, Red Dead Redemption kind of got in the way of me being able to record it, but I just remembered it and looked back through the book. And sure enough, it was written down there, so I do want to play it. Now, it has been so long that I've kind of forgotten what this game was about, so I'm kind of learning along with you guys, so let's get in and see what it's like. Oh god, straight in. August 15th, 2022. Six years before the invasion. Hey. Well, fuck me, that was loud. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hey, you there? Uh... Sorry? Every time I see you, your head's up in the clouds. Maybe you should be an astronaut when you grow up. The girl you just heard was your older sister, Anna. We used to play with toy guns outside the house back when I was a kid. I was 12 years old at the time, and she was 18. We saved money for weeks just to buy these toy guns. We used to start gunfights every day. Now come on, look at me. Do you want to fight? Oh no. Oh. Oh. Back to where if you go now. Now, to business. Anna coughed and tried to imitate a cliche burly action hero. Whoa, Jesus Christ. After all these years, I finally found you. In response, I tried to sound like a man who's been smoking non-stop since he was roughly six years old. Uh. Impossible. Yes, you demon who killed my father. Hope you're ready to die. Never. Burn in hell. Wait, what? You said I'm a demon. I already live in hell. D shut up and fight. Oh my god. Whoa. Oh, this is kind of cool. I'm digging this. Oh, got you. Ha! Suck it! Oh, come on. But I reacted quickly and defended her. Alright, alright, you win. Time out. Uh, I mean, well then, wretched demon. Seems you're more than capable than I thought. And if I'm honest, you weren't too bad either. I'll get you next time, though. When hell freezes over. Oh, I like that wordplay. But don't be so sure. Our gunfights were only a childish fantasy. A duel between siblings who grew up in, with action flicks and video games. But no more than a decade after this fake firefight, we exchanged our fake firearms for real ones and fought valiantly for our survival. See, I'm confused by the little picture because the little picture looks like a gun combined with a... September 1st, 2028, the invasion begins. Um, yeah, the logo is a gun, but it also looks like a little uh, movie board thing on those clapper board. Oh, God. Ah. A duck? Oh my god. Oh my god. Die. Die, scum. Die. <laughs> oh my god, we crashed. Uh. Uh. I don't know what's happening. Uh, oh, oh. Oh, this just got dark. The flower. Uh. What the fuck is going on? I managed to survive, luckily. And now, 20 years later, 
I'm on a journey to document my experiences of people like Anna, who fought for human survival. It was not hard to contact Anna's squad mates. It was hard to find people who wanted to speak about their experiences. After much effort, one fighter said he was willing to tell his story. The next day, I met him in a small, deserted apartment in what used to be the Bronx. Wow, this is weird. It's weird. Cecil, New York. Is it regarding? Uh, yeah, let's go. First, I'd like to thank you, Mr. Cecil, for being the first person uh, who decided to go on camera with his invasion story. Oh, it's nothing, really. I think more invasion vets need to tell their stories. I'm glad you think so. Come to think about it, you sounded pretty enthusiastic over the phone. Why was that? Uh, guess I had a bit too much fun. Fun? Yeah, yeah. I hate to admit it, but fighting was actually pretty fun. I put my guns here into good use. I annihilated absurd amounts of aliens and just ran around feeling like an action hero. My sister died during the invasion. I think it was horrible. Uh, did you not fear death? Initially, yes, but after am after ambushing my first few aliens and I got used to my firearm, it was actually quite liberating. It's kind of like riding a bicycle. At first, you're in constant fear. You're going to fall, get hurt, but after a while, you get used to it. An alien invasion has much higher stakes than a bicycle accident. Of course, of course. I was just giving you an analogy here. At any case, what did you do during the invasion? How did you survive? When the invasion started, I ran to the beach at night. On, on foot? On foot. Why'd you go to the beach of all places? I figured there must be a rescue ship or Navy presence there. And if there weren't, I could always hijack a lifeguard boat. In retrospect, that wasn't the smartest plan. But it was undoubtedly... Cynic. I managed to shoot my way to the beach safely. But as expected, it was swarming with aliens. I needed to kill all of them before searching for leads. Since the beach was pretty open, I pulled out my silence pistol and wondered if I could kill the aliens unnoticed. But if I brought my shotgun with me, in case the things run amok. Oh god. How am I gonna do this? Oh fuck. Oh fuck. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh my god. Scared the shit out of me, dude. No, 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 no. Jesus Christ. Oh my god, this is brutal. This is so brutal. Oh my god, oh my god, my god. I'm gonna fucking die, dude. No, 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 Alright, where are we going? Where are we going? Whoops. Hey! Back. After I killed every alien inside, I saw a light shining in the water. Did, did you? Ah. Oh. It was a body. That person was... I'm sorry, I can't. What? Just turn off the camera. 
I'll remember stuff for that. I forgot. Cecil then began to weep. I also lost someone important to me. Who'd you lose? My sister. I guess I shouldn't have told you I had fun. It's fine. So now, after I told you all that, could you please turn off the camera and leave? I need some time to myself. Turn off the camera. I probably should have turned off the camera straight away, but anyway. I turned off the camera and respected Cecil's request. He asked me to stay until he calmed down. He was grateful that I shared my sister's death with him. Claimed it comforted him. Cecil emphasized emphasized how important it is that I that we tell that uh, how it is to tell your war stories, and thanked me many times over for remain for reminding him of his father's death. Cecil then directed me to a childhood friend he once knew, who moved to Israel a few years ago. She gave a consent to be interviewed, and I caught the first flight to Tel Aviv. Shira. Right, we're recording. I said this to Cecil, I'm going to say it to you. Thank you so much for meeting me and talking to me about what you went through. No problem. Everyone likes a good... Everyone likes a good war story. How do you know Cecil? Childhood friends, a while back. Then my family became religious, decided to live in Jewish homeland and moved to Tel Aviv. I still remain somewhat secular, though. Why are you wearing a military outfit? That's my Earth Defense Force outfit. Thought it would be nice to wear it for the interview. Uh, my sister used to wear the outfit. She died in the invasion. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. What'd she do in the EDF? Sniper. American Division. My deepest condolences, I've lost many friends to the, too, to the war. Let me give you some context. Since Israel was, was always prepped for war, troops were deployed quickly, but the aliens were too strong. The IDF quickly began taking heavy losses. It's interesting that you get all these different perspectives. Oh my god. Israel eventually had to collaborate with the Palestine, Palestinians to protect the area. After the Earth Defense Force was formed, the Israel-Palestinian military joined the EDF and eventually cleared the region with their help. While all of this was going on, I was hiding somewhere. In a base in the, in the south region of Israel. I was stationed there at the time. This is interesting, man. It's odd that... I don't know how long I stayed there. There's no way for me to keep time. I merged after the gunfire stopped. Holy shit. My god. After society got back on its feet, I got a hold of Cecil and told him what I saw. Those people were my friends. My comrades. My squad mates. I told him. I just went into hiding and did nothing. When we heard... When we heard that he told me his story. That he ran to the beach and found his father in the water. I hung up. I couldn't take it. I never talked to him since. Well, not until now. At first, I used to go to funerals. But then it just kind of stopped. I felt like it was my fault they died. I distanced myself from the families. Funny you got here in this day in particular. Hmm? How come? Memorial Day for fallen soldiers and any moment now the entire state of Israel would take a moment of silence for those who protected it 
Come on, stand up. The siren will go off soon. Alright. I will respectfully join. Wow, I, I wasn't expecting this when I went into this game. I did not expect a, a war story and to be interviewing people documentary style for their, uh, their war stories. Shit, that was an experience. That last minute there, that was... That was a good way to finish it off. Wow. Um, I just want to keep in mind for you guys that are watching, um, the, the link to this game will be down in the description box. Make sure you go off and support this game. Kick in a couple of bucks if you can. Or if you can't do that, just play it and then rate it five stars to really help out the developers. Uh, this is a very early version of what the game will be. Uh, they're still working on it. As I said before, I, I did not expect this to be the kind of game that I would play. Um, but it was an experience nonetheless. And that's kind of what I want this channel to be going forward. Is um, as much as I want it to be a fun kind of environment, I enjoy these games that invoke a little bit and kind of give these stories, these heavy stories um, about life, about experiences and stuff. So I'm really proud and pleased that we played this on the channel. I think it carries a very strong message behind it um, about the people that do put themselves on the front line for each and every single country in the world. Um, so it's a message I really do get behind. But anyway, that was 8mm, a uh, documentary style game where you interview soldiers. That was interesting. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to favorite it. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already, guys. Helps me out a lot. Also, share on your social medias, please. It does help us out a lot as well. Don't forget there's a link to popyjn.com down below for all your merchandise, updates, everything is over there, popyjn.com. But thank you guys, I hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are in the world, and until next time, I'm YouTube's PopyJN, peace out.